Hi guys, welcome to my channel. I'm Lisa and in this video we'll have a look at how I've created this burrowing owl in more detail. Before I begin, I've put the materials in the comments below so you can have a look at the colours and the materials I've used to complete this piece. Remember if you like this video, please like and subscribe for more tutorials to come in the future. Let's have a look at drawing the owl. Firstly, what drew me to this owl to draw in the first place was these big bright yellow eyes. So that's where I started. Using a dark sepia to lightly outline the shape of the eyes and then when I'm happy with the shape, I went in with a harder pressure and started to darken the darkest bits on the outside and also the pupil. For this one, I worked on the eyes at the same time, but usually I'll do one eye at a time and then do a bit of fur or a bit of feathers in this case. But because they're so small and closer together, I decided to just do them together. So because the yellow in the eyes is a really bright sort of sickening yellow, I really wanted it to be nice and bright. So you can see there on my um, color picking chart is the lemon yellow and that is from the Caran d'Ache Luminance um, set. And yeah, it's really bright, bright yellow. So then I also went over with the Polychromous yellows, which is the Naples yellows, dark Naples ochre. And then went in with the sort of darker brownie tones over to get the extra detail in there. In the pupils, I went in lightly with the dark sepia and then over with the sky blue to put in the highlight and, you know, make it have a little bit more depth, not just pure black. So moving down the face onto the beak, I did use an embossing tool just to get some feathers that would lap over the beak and around the beak just to make sure that they were some white um, bright feathers around it to make the beak stand out. The beak took a lot of layers to sort of get right and to look right so I went in with the lighter yellow tones and then the orange tones and made sure that I did a couple of layers and then blend with the Holbein soft white, do a couple more really light layers and then blend again and I also put some sky blue in there at the top to get the bit of the shadow and more interest to the color of the beak. So moving on to the feathers and look, I'm not gonna lie, this was so tedious and it was definitely very tricky and it took me a while to sort of find my feet and a rhythm of how to do this. So during the filming of this owl, I actually went away for a week to the snow to do some snowboarding. I took this with me so I could do it overnight. So that's why some of this hasn't been filmed and there's a bit of a gap. I didn't really get much done while I was away, but I sort of changed my strategy while I was away. So at the start, I was sort of doing like little clumps, as you can see now, like picking out a group of them and then going around and filling them in. I wasn't really feeling it. I didn't know if I was going to keep persisting with this piece, but then I sort of changed my strategy. And you can see now that I have outlined all of the feathers on the owl. So I used the Bista pencil just to go in and outline all of the white feathers and the darker tones first. And then I found it easier to get in and complete every section individually because I was losing a little bit of the line and where all the feathers were meant to be. Like I said, this was so tedious and I really didn't think that I was going to get there in the end, but I just had to keep working at it. So for the feathers, I use a mix of the Bista, Raw Umber, Nougat, Burnt Sienna, Green Gold, Ivory, Warm Grey One, and a couple of the yellows like the Naples Yellow and the Dark Naples Ochre. So I started by outlining the feathers and stuff with the mid-tones and then colouring with the lighter tones and working up to the darker tones. So making sure to always go in with the Holbein Soft White and then blend the color after you've put a couple of layers down. So this is what will make the feathers seem really smooth and have that soft feather look. Then over the white feathers that are in between, I sort of went in with the warm gray one, the sky blue, and some of the yellow and lighter orange tones. I had to make sure that I was paying attention to the reference photo and getting all the darker and lighter tones in the right places to make sure that you get the effect that it is sort of a 3D animal and not all just one color. One of the colors that I did use quite a bit that is a little bit out of the ordinary is the light red violet. So this is like a purpley red, more of a purple tone than red. 
Um, and I went into sort of the darker areas, the shadows, especially on the sort of the right hand side. And even under the chin, you can see a little bit of the light red violet in there. So putting this color in with brown tones will create sort of like a gray scale effect and will make it sort of darker tone without making it sort of look muddy and too um, dark and blurry. So with color theory, if you have a look at the color wheel, yellow orange colors are sort of complementary colors with blue and sort of purple tones. So it does work really well when you're putting these colors together and makes your artwork seem a little bit more vibrant and gives it a lot more depth rather than just going in with orange and brown tones and then blacks as well. So for the tail of the owl, and the feet, they were sort of covered in grass and they were a little bit blurry in the reference photo. So I used a little bit of creative license and Googled some images and just made my own sort of tail. And then I just went in with a blurry sort of bottom to cover up the feet and make him look like he's sort of standing in the grass or something like that, rather than just having no feet at all. And for this sort of piece, you don't really wanna draw the attention away from the face and the eyes and the beautiful feathers. It's not about the feet, it's more about the eyes and the beak and the face of the bird. So my recommendations on a piece like this is to make sure that you have a really good outline because that'll make it easier. It's like a puzzle having to put together all of the little feathers and where everything goes. So having a good outline will make the process so much more easier for you. And then finally, just understanding that this will take a long time and it's not something that will be quick and make sure that you take your time and work through it sort of step by step. And then at the end, you can assess all of your values and see where you need to go darker and go in and fix up your final piece. So remember to like and subscribe for all the tutorials that are coming in the future. And if you do attempt a animal like this or something with spots or scales, any reptile is sort of similar and just as tedious. And I would love to see it. So make sure to tag me on Instagram or let me know in the comments below if any of these tips or tricks have helped. But I will see you in the next video. Thanks. Bye.